Hi! Welcome to me in. Ha <laughs> ha! It looks like the bard is about to begin. I'll pour ya an owl over the stories, fables, and tales about the swords, sickles, and spells in the depths of the swells. So take a listen to the tales that we spin here at the Carriage Trust Inn. Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Care Dress Tales. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Mike, and to my left we have... Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan playing Kincaid. Uh, last episode, Kincaid learned that Captain Brandon was captured and being tortured by the evil Torchies, who are also housing the Shadows, and learned from Quentin that the Order is scared of the Shadows because they think they were responsible for the fall of Trin, the Tabaxi City. And this is Nick. I'll be playing Vaso, the half-orc barbarian. And in last episode, Vaso was getting used to his new flying ability, and uh, he's looking forward to using that. Hey, guys, it's Sam, and I play Woods, the elven ranger. Uh, After an episode full of backstories and lore, Woods finds herself facing her two foes, Bodron. That's going to lead us into exactly what happened at the end of last episode. You guys hid into the shadows as Damien and Shadow Gnomus walked by. It said that Gnomus was on his way to Captain Ivanir, and Shadow Gnomus called Damien yes, professor, the professor. professor. Which apparently we've known already, but I didn't make that connection. Neither did I. Yep. Oh, wait, go, Nick. Which, you, Nick, you We're usually make all you. the connections. You're the one that like has this whole story strung uh, together. Actually, this I think the professor thing happened in the one shot. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, you just don't listen to that, our one shots? Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> just a mystery. You still don't know. That, that's my excuse. You're just really in character. <laughs> yeah. The first time the professor was named was season one, episode 17 at the end of it. In case you're wondering. So not okay, the one shot. Not, one shot. <laughs> not the one shot. <laughs> Sounded good. I was trying to make up an excuse. It was the one where Nomus got taken. We did a little special part at the end of it. But that's where we're going to pick up. They are walking. They are still within earshot, but they haven't noticed you yet. They've kind of walked past your position. Woods has her bow drawn, and that's the scene we're going to start with. Well, Kincaid has no idea who Damien is. Yep. So I think he would recognize Evil Nomus. He'd recognize Evil Nomus from the tapestry. And yes, you've never seen... The centaur before you would have probably picked up maybe the professor because i think that's been on some of the pirates have been saying the professor's right. interested in yeah right but kincaid knows our mission is to rescue captain brandon and woods about to firing her bow would prohibit us from doing that <laughs> so i'm very quietly going to like grab her bow and just start slowly pulling it down and just look at you like now's not the time don't, she's gonna please hold don't it. shoot she's my gonna hand hold it <laughs> Steady for a second and look at Vaso. We're all looking at you like, yeah, Vaso's like, be, a, be the decision maker. Stop. Lower it. All right. She's just going to, she's just going to hold it out and like just kind of just follow them with it, but she's not going to shoot. As you're following them, you see Damien kind of stop. His ears perk up when Vaso said, stop, like really quietly. You see him kind of stop moving and his ears perk up and start kind of scanning around. And he turns and kind of looks over in your guys' direction, but he can't see you in the shadows, but he's looking over there. And he leans over to you, Shadow Nomis, and he says, I sense that we might want to get to Captain Invenir. I feel like we probably have to do the merger. I think it's time. And then they will turn and walk off stage towards the harbor. She's going to lower her bow and say, you owe me. Well, if they killed us, then... What's the point? Uh, you owe me, because if you had shot at him, the whole city would have gone after us. We would have just killed them. No, we wouldn't have. What are we going to do? We got to save Captain Brandon. Keep your head in the game. It sounds like we need to go try to get Captain Brandon, maybe get word to Quentin, and then we need to try to find that metal whale. Yeah, we have to get to Nomis, because I don't know what a merger is, but I'm assuming it's something with Shadow Nomis and regular Nomis coming into one, and not doesn't feel safe or or maybe not maybe that's the whole purpose and it's supposed to be fine maybe we're supposed to find our other and merge with them maybe maybe we're the bad guys okay drama queen let's uh let's go save uh, captain brandon here (laughs) maybe we're the bad guys what okay let's let's take it down a notch here i mean i've always known the mission here i've always known that torchies were the bad guys so 
<laughs> I'm just Probably. saying. I just, fine. What's our plan? How are we? She's so defeated. She's so frustrated. What's our, well, how do we, what are we doing? Where are we blowing something up? Are we starting a fire? What were we doing? I think we're trying to try to start fires. Yes. Yeah. And we're, try to lure people away from the building that Captain Brandon's in. Yeah. Do, do we, we want to set the Captain Brandon's building on fire or do you want to set other ones on fire too? I feel like people run towards fire. That's also, what I was trying to think. Also, are we going to open a rift if we do this? If we create panic, is that going to open a rift? Well, I think we can run. Oh. It might. Oh, it might. We'll see. But that might be the distraction we need from the torchies. Too. I, mean, I could just open a rift. But can we lure Danoa out of it? Hey, Danoa, 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 Danoa. <laughs> Is there a call? Like a, got, got a biscuit for you. Danoa, Danoa. Who's that good shadow beast? Uh, I mean, what if I just open a rift on the other side? If someone doesn't come out. It's a rift. It's going to, people are going to probably go if to it. If you want to do that, and then we can try to go in there and get Captain Brandon. Can you fly over a fence? I can get through a fence. Not a problem. You can fly over a fence, Vaso. Yeah. Well, look at somebody who has flight. We have a good swimmer and we have somebody that can fly. There's just me. The plus 12 to her bow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woe is me. <laughs> over here turning into demigods. Not a oh, yeah, big I forgot. deal. Yeah, you can fly once you figure out your once you can goddess figure form. That out, yeah. uh, okay. So, so right now you guys are in Black Bay Harbor in the Lewiston district, which is the harbor or like the warehouse district. And I believe you needed to get over to Butcher Town, which is outside the city walls mm -hmm. on the, I want to say it was the east side. All right. So we're just going to continue to stealth through the city or do you want to like fly us there? What's the. Yeah. Well, we'll stealth to Butcher Town. He's only, got one, look at the place. He's only got one hand. <laughs> yeah. so, um, how far is it? I mean, I pictured Black sure, Bay Harbor. Yeah. Pretty big. <laughs> oh, just right there. Okay, so about we need to go uh, an inch and a half, mm -hmm. according to my map. It's a pretty large city, but you guys do know the layout because it was where you guys were living for a few months. So I'm just going to follow you all. I know where the prison. Are we going to go through the fairgrounds or skirt the wall? Well, it looks like there's only one way in or out, so I guess we'll sneak through that gate. Okay. As you guys are moving around this city, you do see that. It's not the same as what you remember with lots of merchants out on the street trying to peddle their wares. It's very much think of a martial law feel. So you see the same thing you were seeing in Amberton. You see one Order of Light member flanked by two, for the better word, guardsmen. You can tell they have a different uniform on. They don't look as armored, but it's definitely very heavily patrolled. So you guys are making very slow progress. You are making progress because okay. you had good stealth rolls last time. I'm not going to take that from you. Great. But it is going to be slow. Yeah. That's when we got time. I mean, yeah, there's just a merger happening, and, you know. Nothing Captain but time. Brandon's being <laughs> tortured. Whatever, whatever that means. <laughs> I mean, the other option is I can open a rift. We could pop through and sprint there, open a rift back up. The only problem with that is we don't know what we're going to open a rift to. Yeah, it's not going to work. I think you opening a rift would cause quite the distraction. All right, so are we there? Are we in Butcher Town? Are we near the jail? Nope, I'm going to have you guys do at least one more stealth check as you get to the gate because that is going to be a, a tricky spot to get by because it's not as like many alleyways and roads you can go down. You need to get past the guards that are at a guard gate. So it can be stealth or it can be deception. How are you guys going to get past this gate? Stealth for me. I, I don't think them seeing me was going to help anything. I rolled a one. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what I roll. Yeah. 20. <laughs> 17. <laughs> All right, so. So average. I crit fail, right? So yes. Uh, I don't get to add my eight. You can still add your eight. Seven, nine. Yeah, you don't technically crit fail on ability checks. Yeah, that's In the rules. Seems weird that you don't, but. And I have a nine. So you guys are on your way to get through the gate, and you're trying to find a way to stealth through, and you just really can't. But then you notice that part of the wall in normal fantasy trope is starting to crumble a little bit. So you're like, okay, it's dark over in this corner. We can climb up the wall. So we have Vaso and Kincaid go first. You guys are climbing up. A rock gives out from Vaso and it drops and hits Woods right on the head. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> she lets out a little yelp and then falls the 10 feet. So take 1d6 of damage as you land on your back. That's four for anyone keeping track at home. What was that over there? Go check it out. 
and we're going to have one wing. So it's going to be one order of light member and two guards start working their way over to you. I'm going to have them roll one perception check to see if they notice woods on the ground right away. A 13. What was your stealth roll? A uh, nine. A nine. So they definitely spot her. There's someone in the shadows. Go get her. And they're going to start closing in on woods. They haven't seen you two yet because you're still up. I'm saying about 20 feet on the wall. Oh, so we haven't cleared the wall yet? I'm going to cast... You're probably pretty close to clearing the wall. I'm going to cast um, Fog Cloud at a level two, right centered around them so they get disoriented. And then what are you going to do after you cast Fog Cloud? I'm going to try to scurry back up the wall. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So I just want them not to see me. No, that's fine. So you cast Fog Cloud and then you start climbing up the wall. Yep. Can I cast Gust underneath me to help me go up? Yeah, I'll give you advantage on Like a your... Wanda Sykes thing? Or not Wanda Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> is this she the comedian? Yeah. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Wanda Vision. That's fine. I'll give you advantage on your strength or athletics or acrobatics. I'll let you choose as you're climbing up the wall. Golly. You got to tell me which one you choose. Oh, they're the same. Uh, 14. All right, we'll say we make about halfway up the wall. Vaso, Kincaid, what are you guys doing during this fiasco? Are you just going to continue climbing or are we going to stop? What are you going to do? I'm, I'm gonna keep yeah. going. We're gonna keep going. Okay, keep so going. you guys make it up to the top you're while fine. she's doing all this. You're gonna turn around and help me? Well, you're up the wall. We can. I have a cloak of many useful things. Okay. And I think one is a rope. All right. So you drop a rope down to help her out? Yes. You can grab the rope or you can continue climbing? I'd like to grab the rope and climb. So as you get to the very top of it, with Kincaid's help, you get to the very top before this crossbow bolt comes flying up at you. And does a 24 hit you? I gave him disadvantage. <laughs> yes, wow. it does. All right. Go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw. That's the, golly. 13. You failed the constitution saving throw, so you take four piercing damage and ten poison damage. As you hear the Order of Light member yell at his compatriot, sound the alarm, there's somebody on the wall. Can we get up on the wall and shoot them before he can sound the alarm? You can try that, yeah, shoot the order. The guy running away. Yeah, so you'd see one of the guards been running away. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Uh, and I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds at a second level. Uh, Is that a, I thought that was a touch. Inflict Wounds. Dang it, I touched my arrow. Is that <laughs> No. Because okay. it's not a weapon attack. Inflict wounds is a spell attack. Do, 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 do. I'll do Hell of Thorns. I'll level one. Just a little extra something. Right, shooting the guardsman as he runs away. 22. Hits? I don't even know why I ask. <laughs> well, they might have a really high DC. It just hits. Eight damage. Well, you did Hail of Thorns at what level? One. So okay. I do 1d10. Eight more, and then I'm hitting him again. Well, you don't have to hit him again, because as that first arrow hits him, he kind of stumbles a little bit, and then these thorns shoot up, and you see him turn into a golden shard. Perfect. That's one. Hey, guys, a little help down here. We got to take care of these three before they sound the alarm, blow our cover. I Mirror guess there. we'll enter initiative at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put the enemy that shot Woods at the top. This was the runners, and then Woods, so I guess... I'll let you guys choose. Do you want to go? I was going to cast um, a magic missile at a second level spell. Kincaid is next. So are you targeting the Order of Light guy or the guard? I thought they were both dead. Just one of the guardsmen. Oh, dead. he was with... There's, there's two, two guard, There's two yep. guardsmen and one Order of Light. No, there's one and one. Probably the guardsmen. Uh, so it's an automatic hit. Uh, four darts. Ooh, D4 each, I think? Yep, plus one. For each of them. So 44 plus four. Yep. Nice. One... One. Two. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Two. Four. One. Five. So nine. Nine. Okay. Um, that was a waste. I'm going to say you at least knock him over because it was kind of an unexpected hit. You hit him with all nine. They're all four darts, so he does get knocked prone, but he's not dead. He didn't yeah, it's fine. Sure. I thought that would have gone better. All right, Basso, it is your turn. Okay, so we're like on the top of the wall. You're on the top of the wall. You can see out into Butchertown. So at this point, as you look out to Butchertown, since you were there first, you definitely see they have a large field kind of corridored off with, think of makeshift guard towers with like a wire fence around it. Yeah. And then inside that contraption, that camp, there is a one of the actual barns, which has all its windows like boarded off. Okay. Do I see any guards out there? You see lots of guards out by the internment camp, yes. Okay. Picture three 
uh, guard posts on each side. So you have a guard post in each corner and then a guard post halfway through each wall. So there's a total of three on each side. Okay. And they all have guards in them. And then there are people walking in the perimeter as well. Yeah. So uh, Vasto is going to, so he's like on the top of the wall. So he's going to gonna throw his sword at the uh, at the guardsman. Okay. The guy that's knocked prone already. So you have advantage on or, the- uh, I'm sorry, the other guy. The order of light guy? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't have advantage, but you can throw it at him. <laughs> Uh, 21 dirty. That hits. Uh, nine damage. Is that, you get to add your strength as well? Uh, yeah, that's what I did. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and then he's going to use his bonus action to summon his sword back. Okay, sounds good. You threw your sword as your action. You recalled it, but I believe as a barbarian, you get multi-attack. So if you wanted to throw your sword again, you could, but then you would have to wait to recall it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wait. Okay. I don't want to lose my sword. Sounds good. That's going to bring us to the top of the order where the guy that just got a sword thrown at him is going to reach into his jacket vest and he's going to pull out a potion. He's going to drink the potion and then he turns invisible and he's going to kind of scour off to the side. You guys can roll and survival check. 13. 10. Uh, 17. All right. The 13 and the 17, you guys would be able to still track the assassin because fortunately Sam's fog cloud or Woods' fog cloud is still down there. So you'd see his trail okay. as the fog is parting from him. Kincaid, you're not used to seeing that. So you Sure. So Kincaid would have disadvantage trying to fight him, but you guys would just be able to shoot at him. And that brings us to the other guardsman. He's going to stand up and start running towards the alarm. He's going to make it about halfway there. So he ran and dashed. Is it my turn now? It is. I'm going to pump some arrows into the guy who's running. All right. Sounds good. 17 hits nine does he already have some he okay. does callus slayer makes another seven so 16 total he goes down falling into a golden shard he made it a little bit further than his buddy so there's two golden shards on the ground can i send my second arrow into the um order of light guy that's weaving through the air the fog yes you can uh 22 22 hits i oh, sorry it was 27 that still, makes it different. still hits uh and 14 on the all right, damage. On the damage. Okay. He takes a hit. He kind of stumbles. I don't remember if invisibility breaks if he take damage. I'm going to say he breaks invisibility when mm-hmm. he takes damage. Because it was a pretty high amount of damage, so I think he would have blown his concentration. That brings us up to Kincaid, unless Woods has a bonus action she wants to do. Uh, no. Okay. Kincaid. Uh, well, since it's dark out, I'm trying not to cast my fire spells. So... Probably smart. Yeah. I will cast Frostbite at right. him. That is a constitution saving throw. Chile. Uh, 13. That fails. So he takes 2d6 cold damage. Four, three, seven. Right. And he has disadvantage on his next weapon attack roll. Sounds good. And that brings us up to Vasa. He's got some pretty good distance from you now. So if you are going to throw your sword, you'll probably have disadvantage. Okay. You can also fly at him, too. Ooh, I did forget you can fly. Ooh, you can fly <laughs> and throw. You get, no, you just do like a ramming sword at him. You just fly down and slash his head off? How, how, I was thinking like a battering ram, impale him sort of thing. Um, He is probably like a Norwal. 45 feet from you because you're up at the top of the wall. Okay. He's at the you ground listening. and he's running away from you guys. Okay. Like Norwal. Well, he's just outside of my range, so I'm just going to throw the sword at him. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Flying's probably going to attract some attention. Although we have a huge fog cloud, two people just Um, died. Ten. There's golden shard. Ten to hit. Yeah. Is going to miss. Man, okay. Um, Yeah, he's just going to summon it back. (laughs) Okay, sounds good. (laughs) You going to do any movement if you wanted to move or anything like that? Or are you going to kind of stay put on the wall? Yeah, I'll I'll move like closer to where he is. Okay, sounds good. So you're going to kind of run along the wall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like quiet, quietly, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to draw too I'll much. I'll say that you're, you practiced your flying, so you're just hovering right above, so you're not even making any noise. You're just <laughs> yeah, I'm just, kind of, flo- I'm, I'm just kind of floating there. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that brings us up to my enemy one. They are all dead. Enemy two is going to turn with his crossbow, and he's going to shoot at... Go ahead and roll a d4. It's going to be one, two, three. Four, he misses. Four. Oh, misses. <laughs> He is going to second guess shooting the crossbow. Uh-huh. Instead, he's going to line up his crossbow with the warning bell. Oh, he's crap. going to try to shoot the bell. It is a far shot for him with his crossbow. So he's going to have disadvantage. 
A 14, I think, is going to hit. So you, a little gong does kind of go out into the night sky, and you start hearing more guards kind of pull through that gate that you guys are trying to avoid. And this guy will successfully slide off to the side into the buildings, knowing that he's accomplished what he needed to do and get out of the way. So we will drop out of that combat. Should we just slide on the other side of the wall and start running? What what building is near me? Um, you guys are or right like- on the top of the wall. So there are quite a few buildings around you guys on the inside of the city. On the outside of the cities, it's mostly fields that go up to the wall. So again, we're going from outside to inside? You're going from inside to outside. Because you guys went through the harbor into the center of the city in the warehouse district. Then you climb the wall to get outside the city to Butcher Town. Okay. I was going to cast Bonfire at one of the buildings to try to... Maybe the one he ran into? Or try to signal, like, maybe he's signaling that there's a fire oh, instead of a... So just the nearest building that I think is flammable, I'm just casting Bonfire. Yeah, I'd say there's probably some metal sheeting buildings in here, but there's definitely at least... a. A handful of wooden structures around that you could easily light up with a bonfire spell. And I was going to look at Joe before I cast and like be prepared to run. I'm going to give it a little gust once it's started. Get some oxygen in there. Help this thing really. Is it cantrips or what is? This is a cantrip. Mine's a cantrip also. Perfect. I would say you've probably practiced this a little bit before in the past. Heck yeah. On your long rest at campsites. I just picture this happening. So you are able to quickly light up a structure and it is burning. Yeah, I'm sliding down the other side of the wall and going to start... I want a good perception check on the outside of the wall. I'm just throwing a grease bag on it for good measure. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. So you get a grease bag, you toss it down there. Go ahead and roll a dexterity throw just to see how well, how accurate you were with uh, hitting your grease bag. Does a natural 20 count? Yes, it does. <laughs> so you <laughs> land it perfectly on the fire, it immediately engulfs the building <sighs> that was there. Probably catches the building next to it on fire a little bit also. That is distraction. That is a good distraction. That's the distraction we were looking for. That was my Star Wars. This is the distraction you were looking <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're out of that combat, and you guys are on top of the wall at this point. Sam, you did a, or Woods, you did a... 17, perception check. You would notice that a lot of the guards that were watching the gate, they had guards on both sides, and now a lot of those guards have pulled off to investigate what that warning bell was. Then they saw a fire, so then they started going to the fire. But then you do notice that that one guy that's got an arrow sticking out of his shoulder is about two streets away walking towards the uh, guards. So you have a couple of seconds before he's going to let the guards know that there's more than just the fire. Does that make sense? Can I reach him with my bow? You are welcome to, if you want to. Guy, should, should I try to, or should we just go? I think we just need a okay. bolt. Let's yep. go. Let's do it. Vasa, you can fly off the edge, Uh huh. but we need to know how Kincaid and Woods are getting down from the wall. Can I just slide down it? You can t- you'll take some fall damage, but how you can try can to you, mitigate it. Can you go down to the ground, hold the rope? Can you just pick us up and drop us? Like, have you, have yeah, we tried I'll, that? I'll just, uh, I'll just grab it with my good arm. I'll say you can take one. Yeah, I was going to do one and then go I'll, back I'll up. I'll just jump down. I have a really good apro- acro- acrobatics. Okay, so you're going to jump down. It's about a 30 feet drop. 11. All right. Still going to have you roll 3d6. <laughs> Three points. <laughs> I was going to say drop the lowest, but so two points. <laughs> Done. Perfect. So you take two fall damage because somehow you miraculously fell in a hay bale <laughs> or something. Yeah. And then... Uh, Light came, it on fire. <laughs> and I came up with like uh, Scarlet Johansson hair, like Black Widow flip. <laughs> yeah. And then Vasa, you carry King Gate down yeah. and you guys are able to land just fine. You're now on the outside of the wall. You start hearing some sort of shouts like commands. You can't make it out because of the wall and the fire and all that jazz, but you probably want to move. Yeah. yeah, let's run. I'm running. Can we run stealthily? You can try. 17. Okay. I guess we're all doing it. <laughs> Natty 20. Uh, 18. So with the fire going on inside the city walls, they've pulled a lot of the eyes over there. So you're able to kind of do a wide skirt out from the city so you didn't run directly to the internment camp but you've kind of broken out into the countryside a little bit more and now you have a more leisurely pace to get up to the internment camp okay did quentin tell us what building captain brandon was in i don't remember i think it was by the fence line wasn't it yes he had said that he was in the area where they interrogate the prisoners the spot where they take the people that are not being complacent 
I just explained it earlier to Vaso, but now you're a little bit closer. You can see it's basically one, think about like one cornfield wide encampment just in fences and wire, but they encompassed the barn that was in that field. And that barn has all of its windows and doors kind of boarded up. It's got to be in there. So we got to get gotta... through this fence on our side of the fence. Yeah. How tall is the fence? The fence is probably about 20 feet tall. There is a guard post with two guards on each corner and then one in the center of each. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight uh, guard towers. Okay. How far away did we come for where we just lit the fire? It's, like, pretty, can... it's pretty far away at this point. Okay. So they can't see. No. Okay. Just because you're in a complete different district. All right. And that fire was on the inside of the wall. So I don't think they'd be able to see. Okay. The fire I was just trying to the... gauge oh, yeah, how gotcha. far away we were. Do how much time we have. Do you to distract the guards while you. Um, what are you going to do? Open the rift? I was thinking about open the rift. Yeah. You need to do it like on the other side so they all come we're, running we're away from the bar i need? was gonna write i was gonna open a two two small ones so they each like a set goes this way and a set goes that way how far, how far away can you create a riff i think pretty far i don't think you really tested that part out because you haven't had a need to yet i think i did way back in the beginning of the season i don't remember i just remember asking you like do i need to be right next to a rift to be able to open or close it yes and you needed to be within i think we said 30 feet okay We'll say it's now 60 feet since Trin fell. So, um, are there any trees around this encampment? There are not, because it's in a nice wide open field so that they can have easy sight lines of their internment camp. I can carry one of you over, but the problem is when we get Captain Brandon, I can only take one person back over. I mean, I can get through the fence. Okay. So if you want to open your rifts, carry woods over the fence, I can get through it. I'm coming too. Unless you don't want to. Well, I thought I would stay out and kind of be the distraction. Open okay. rifts. Okay. That works. Yeah. So save me a spell slot. Can I tell if they are guards people or order of light people? You can tell that they are all order of light around this internment camp. Okay. Kind of like they are more wary of this area. They put it outside the city. It's the most fortified and it has the most presence of the actual order of light members. I have a question. Can you have an answer? I hide on the other side. Yeah, you can. Can I open a rift that is just big enough to see out of like a peephole? <laughs> I would say no. You have to be able to cross the other side. Yeah, but can I cross it, but then like like get into it and then like close it so I'm just like staring and like seeing through it. So I would be in Dorma and I would just have a little tiny space that I can spy on these people. <laughs> You're trying to make like a... Uh... Like a peephole. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say you don't have the con control to be able to make it that precise okay i also would like to start working on phasing in between like popping in and popping out okay so you're gonna make a point that on your short rest long yeah, rest moving you're gonna... forward i'm gonna be able to do that because i think right now it would be really great if i could do those things like benson used to be able to yeah, he had to use what was called a phase round yeah you could theoretically do it with a quickly open a rift quickly close the rift but it's not gonna be as small and speedy so i really gotta work i think i i feel like i have the power to do it without a phase around if I practice? If you practice, but... I haven't practiced yes. at all. I just thought about it. She's literally like, dang it, I wish I could do that. Is that what we want to do? Because are we just like in the middle of a field? Like, can they see us? Well, you guys did your stealth check. You took your time to come back around to the side of it. It was Butcher Town where all the fields and farm animals and all that stuff was. So I assume you're kind of hiding behind a, a fence or... A barn or a something? bush or, you know, back something. Back alley somewhere. Looking out at it. So I'll say that you're probably... 200 feet away from the fence is the closest you get to have these types of conversations. I just do, can all order members close rifts? Yes, that's part of being in the order. So I gotta close a real, I gotta open a big one. So it takes them a while to close it. Yeah, I think if, if you can just do one big one, the opposite of the barn, you and I can fly in there, okay. hopefully when they start running out and just try to brute strength their way all right, to get if, Captain Brandon and get out. If one of them doesn't run, I'll just start shooting arrows at it. Okay. okay. So uh, let's say if if oh. Basso and I aren't back in like 20 minutes, however you want to keep track of that, or some length <laughs> of time, just meet us back at the boats. Or do we want to go to Heaven Sprewry? They're allies there. Oh, do y'all know where that's at? I do. He does. Yeah. Heaven Can you yeah. go ahead and roll a history check? Me? Yes. Specifically? Yep. Uh, 17 plus something. <coughs> Minus one. 16. <laughs> <laughs> plus I would plus. say that with your prior experience in Black Bay Harbor, you would have gone to Heaven's Cloud Brewery since it was a pretty popular tavern. Is that in okay. Butchertown? Or? No, it's actually over by the Order of Light. 
It's over by, um, I can't remember what it's called, the square that's by the Order of Light. Uh, Harbinger Square? Yes, it's over by Harbinger Square. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a plan on what I want to do. Are you sharing it with everybody or keeping it to yourself? No, I'll keep it to myself. All right, sounds good. So... Have fun, boys. <laughs> we're going Bye-bye. to... Bye-bye. All right, I'm going to open this rift and you guys are going to go. So... Where are you opening the rift at? I got to be 60 feet from it. I'm 200 feet away from the building and the fence. And the fence, yep. And the fence. So I am going to... Crap. Go ahead and roll a perception check, everybody. 20 dirty. Natural 20. 17. You guys all definitely notice that you start hearing kind of a low humming sound. And then you look out into the city and you see a bunch of those air elemental ships from the Order of Light. And they are now kind of crisscrossing the city with spotlights kind of shining down. And you kind of get the sense that information has been delivered (laughs) from that guard you didn't kill. Screw it. I'm going to open a rift. We're going to get on the other side. We're going to run 200 feet straight. And I'm going to open another rift. And we're going to get out of the building. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I'm opening a small rift for us to jump into. Right in front of you. Right in front of us. And then we are going to... Book it 200 feet completely straight, and then I'm going to open another one. We're going to pop out. Okay. Okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right, I'm doing it. All right, take your damage. Oh, we are doing a point per person to get through it. To open it, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to do take three points of damage. Then it was two to close it. Per person. Yep. Yeah, so it's three. Wait, one point per person to open it and two points to close it. Correct. Per person. If you're planning on closing it. But you're not, right? The one we're at right now, this little mini rift? I mean, stuff can you still get through it. Yeah, well... Or, or I'm going to do it in a kind of a hidden spot so so we can come back through it. Yeah. You can okay. save your hit points. Okay. Okay. I took my three. All right. So we're, at, you, we're in Dorma. Yep. Yeah, you guys cross into Dorma and you look out across the field and you see a fence with about nine guard towers on it. Are there any people in there? There's no people in it, but they have that side also secured. Well, I can. I but can there's carry no security. Guys over. Yeah. There's security over there. Same I just thing. asked. Well, I asked if there's people, but there's probably Denoa. No, there's people there. Did, oh. I, did I say no? Yeah, you said no. Oh, I thought you meant like citizens. There's no, no citizens, but there are. Are there order members over yep, there? Order members on that side too. Dang, they really keeping this uh, lock and key. <sighs> Vaso, guys, I don't think we can rescue him without dying. Vaso, you're kind of having weird memories because you don't quite have memories of being there. Yeah. But something feels very deja vu to you and you kind of get stunned as you're staring off at the active volcano that is on the dorm side. Cool. And for some reason you're like, man, that looks so familiar. Like something is kind of like distracting you. So I picture you kind of standing there, empty thought, like kind of like confused. I'm just, staring, I'm just kind of staring off into space a little bit. Yep, exactly. Maybe a little agitated. No, you're definitely getting agitated, especially when you got to the other side and we're like, there are people on this side too? Yeah. <laughs> like, guards people? Then you start going through your head that these are the people they were concerned about being shadows, being able to go between the planes. You so think they're on our side? They're not sure what they are. That's why they're in the internment camp. So the internment camp's in Genoa? Nope. The internment camp's in Ivana, but they are guarding against people just going into Dorma and leaving. That's why it's protected on both sides. Oh, oh, so they yep. think the people who are in the internment camps can open a rift themselves and go into Dorma. Yep, they're not sure if they can or not. Again, everybody that's in the internment camp are the magic users that didn't show the disillusion. The ones that showed disillusion just get executed. Are you sensing a theme of paranoia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is hard. <laughs> Guys, what are we going to do? I have to save Captain Brandon. I get that. Well, I don't I- expect you all to do it. I, we want to. We want to help meet you, me. but we just how come up with a plan that to do this? Okay, well, let's do the original plan. You also want the original. We got to do it here then, because the original plan back there is not going to work. There's okay. helicopters and light yeah, beams. Yeah, we'll we'll do the original plan on the Noah side. Okay. To go cause a, a distraction. I'm well, gonna fog cloud us, so it just looks like a f- roll of fog coming through. I'm about to go all out on my spells if I need to. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We can do that. So we're gonna do that on this side. I gotta. It's Captain Brain. I gotta do it. All right. So this is what we're gonna do. We are gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna fog cloud the two of the uh, the us this way. You're gonna fly really low to the ground with you, and there's just gonna look like fog is just rolling in, and we're gonna be in it. We're gonna hit the gate. You can go through the gate. You're gonna pick me up and go over the gate. And we're gonna get into the building. Okay. And then once we're in the building, we're just gonna fight to our death. Uh, all right, so once we're in the building, <laughs> sorry. Sounds about right. Once we're in the building, I'm going to open up another 
um, Rift get us inside the building on the other side, and then we're just going to fight to our death, find him, blow the place up, and leave. I was just going to start by blowing it up by doing a tidal wave. Sounds good to me. I can create a 30-foot long, 10 feet wide, and 10 feet tall wave. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failure, a creature takes 48 bludgeoning damage and is knocked prone. On a success, a creature takes half as much damage and isn't knocked prone. All right, so we just want to... The water then spreads out across the ground in all directions. So I'm thinking this huge tidal wave is just going to come in, maybe knock down the fence. You could probably get a tower with it, too. Yeah, just... Cool. On this side? On Danoa's side or the other side? Uh, Probably the other side. All right, then we get back to the other side. All right, then we're going to run... What we're going to do is we're just going to charge the gate on this side. I'll open it up and get us to the other side in front of the gate. Just to give you information that you would have as you're looking at the two scenes. On the Dorma side, it's just the fence and the Order of Light people in their towers. On the Ivana side, you have that same thing with the fence, the guard towers, Order of Light, but you also have citizens in like a tent city on the inside. You so know, like the actual internment people. So if you're looking to use them, in your chaos, you don't want to be on the Ivana side. If you're trying to not involve the citizens, you'd probably want to do it on the Dorma side. I'm hoping if the citizens are magic users, though, that this sparks them to start creating spells to freak themselves. Okay, so let's do it on Ivana. Okay. So you guys cross back into Ivana. Yeah, we cross back into Ivana. You're and about we'll- 200 feet away from the fence and tower. We'll say you're 200 feet from the middle tower. You know what I mean? Like. So- yeah, if I was trying to knock over the fence for us to run through. Okay, so we're just going to start charging the fence. All right, so you guys are just going to start sprinting. Yep. And then when I'm in 120 feet, I'm casting Tidal Wave. I was going to say, when you get to about 120 feet, they'll start probably noticing you, but if you're just going to cast it <laughs> when you get that 20 feet, they'll notice you, but it will probably be a little late for those two individuals on the tower. Yep. Sounds good. All right, you guys are get up. You start running about 120 feet out. Kincaid starts waving his hands around, chanting with his spear, I assume, or his trident, and then a... 10 foot by 10 foot by 30 foot 30 feet long up to 10 feet wide and 10 feet tall of water just starts hurling in front of him like he's pushing it and it just slams into the tower collapsing the middle tower which pulls the fence down and you guys can easily tiptoe over it i will have you do dexterity checks to see if you cut yourself on the barbed wire as you run over it what Basso, you can just fly over it. Yeah, Basso's oh, yeah. flying. Yeah. I'm trying 25. to save you all the hit points. 25, <laughs> yeah. yep. So you're able to sparse out your feet so you don't step on any of the barbs. What am I rolling? Dexterity saving throw. Uh, 12. 12. Um, take 1d4 of damage as you step on one of the barbs, but you, don't, but you don't get tangled up by the wire. Hey guys, it's Mike, your host and Dungeon Master at Carriage Rest Tales. I just want to say thanks for spending the time listening to us on our podcast. It really just means a lot to us. If you are enjoying this content, please like and subscribe to this channel and we'll pass this along to your friends so we can grow our listenership as well. You should also check us out on our website at carriagerestales.com. At our website, you'll be able to access some of our additional content, such as our one-shot episodes, but you'll also be able to see some of the information on how you can get a hold of us either through social media or email. As always, thanks again for being a listener and don't be a stranger. We'd love to hear from you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, you definitely see a lot of lights just immediately flip on and they are no longer pointing outward and they're starting to point inward. And you see a lot of very confused, kind of gaunt looking citizens. They don't look like they've been injured or bad or anything, but they just look down and depressed and maybe a little bit hungry and they are very confused, but you guys are still running. I'm just trying to explain what you're seeing as you're going. Um, is there another tower close to me? You guys are up here on the inside. So if you go to the right you'll be running towards the barn where there is a tower next to the barn and then if you go to the left you'd be hitting a tower into the rest of the field kind of stuff like that um to the tower that's to the left i'm going to create a bonfire underneath the tower <laughs> all right and Sounds then good. Throw i'm another, gonna guess it and then throw a grease bag at it all right it goes up it is made out of wood we've already established that so it definitely starts burning from the base up can i do that to the one to the right before the barn too um, you'll have to do some movement, and at this point, I want to roll initiative just so we get some idea yep. of. Uh, I'm just trying. Everybody, I told you I'm going all out. Seven, twelve. Uh, twelve. For me to turn into my goddess, I have to roll twenties and get matching pairs. Twenties and get. I gotta roll a d twenty and get matching pairs. Yes, multiple times. In a okay, I wanted to persuade then turned people. So I thought if I was in goddess form and could float over there, but I think it's just going to take too long, right? Yeah, I, I don't think we have time. I don't think we have time either. 
I think we can Come back. shout and yell, yeah. fight for your freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to yell freedom and we're going to gust it to them. So it like kind of the, the wind picks up what we're saying. Oh, all right. So you're going to use gust to kind of throw your voice a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. That works for me. Yeah. Like use your spells, use your magic, fight them. Yeah. Free yourselves. Kind Free of yourselves. All right. So let's get our initiative order That's in here. It. This is Woods, Vasa, Kincaid. Well, you all tied. Oh, okay. I would just assume Woods would go first. Uh, my monsters or enemies got a four, ten, and nine. I have three different sets. So where we had a did twelve? They? So four is here, at the bottom. All right, that was enemy one. Uh, I'm in the seven, so they would go in between us all. In between yep. there. All right, so you guys ran in, attacked. Woods carried her voice to yell, "Freedom!" Use your spells, all that jazz. Vasa, what are you doing? Uh, I am going to the barn door and I'm going to kick it open. I'm going to say you can close the distance to the barn, but you wouldn't have the movement to get to it and kick it open. But okay. you're right outside the barn. You can hear talking and jostling inside. The walls are too thick to make out what it is, but you hear noise. Uh, enemy three is going to skip this turn because of reasons I'm not going to say. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. I want to use a bead and find out why. <laughs> you're welcome to use a bead whenever you want. The two that were on top of the tower that was just burning, you see them put something in their mouth and then they blink out of existence. Cyanide pills. (laughs) Hail Hydra. (laughs) And that brings us up to Kincaid. So one tower is burning. One tower is down with the water. Those members, you see two golden shards as they fell to their deaths. And then the other one that was burning, the two guards that were on top of it just blinked out of existence. All right. I'm going to do a bonfire and a grease bag on the other tower near the barn. Okay, so you're going to close the distance. You're going to throw another grease bag and bonfire. Okay, so that one starts catching on fire as well. And then any person near me, I'm just going to like try to morale them. Okay. Like, this is your freedom. This is your chance. Fight for yourselves. Go ahead and roll a charisma check of some sort. Uh, I'll let you pick the skill. Religion. Persuasion. 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 It's a plus three for any of it. Uh, nine. Okay. I'm busy. I'm casting. I'm like, they probably think I'm a crazy person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who? What is that? <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Because they don't usually see a Triton. But I'm casting spells. So yeah, I'm hoping like... Spells, you'll, they'll notice that, oh, that's a, a magic caster. He's probably doing that. You now see the two guards that were on top of the tower that you just lit. They are going to shoot two arrows down at you since you just tried to... You're trying to kill them. So they're going to shoot at you with their crossbows. Yep. Uh, a 16 to hit and a 23 to hit. Both hit. Both hit. Go ahead and roll just one constitution saving throw. I have a plus five in constitution for some reason. Nice. I don't know why. Probably 10. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. You're going to take 14 piercing damage from the two bolts, and then you take 10 poison damage. Oh, my gosh. Are you still alive? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> They're not messing around in this internment camp. All right. That brings us up to Woods. Um, I am going to I'm going to cure wounds on him quickly. Is that a touch spell? Yes. I'm okay. st- and I'm cons- right? Yeah. So you're going to close the distance, kind of falling both of them over to the barn. You're going to get to Kincaid first so you can touch him and heal him for... Um, I have 11 hit points left. Yeah. Okay. Just letting you know. Yeah, I mean, I could. You just took two arrows to the chest, so I'm assuming we'll go level to one d eight plus my spell casting modifier. Seven and five is twelve. Twelve and two and five is seven and nineteen. Twelve is nineteen. Nineteen total. Nice. That's pretty good. And as a bonus action. I'm going to aim up and shoot my arrows at the guys at the tower. I'm that pick. would be an attack action. I can't cast it. Can I attack and then use cure wounds as a bonus? Is cure wounds a bonus action? Uh, no. Then no. Okay. Then um. All of your gift of light and darkness spells are bonus actions. Taking healing potions as a bonus action. Oh, I forgot we had healing potions. Oh, I'm going to take some healing potions. Okay. Don't you have some shield thing? And I'm also, can I give him one? You can hand him I'll one. I'll hand him one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you, one. I'm going to give you two, actually, Ryan. Sorry. I'm at 30 hit points. I know, but. My just, max is only 36. I know, but just for the future, I'm going to toss you, I'm going to, here, hold on to these. And I'm going to give you two. I have four healing potions. Oh, healing. Me. I thought you were healing me for another spell. No, no, okay. no. So I have two healings. 
two potions. healing potions. Yep. And uh, we said they're... 44 plus four. Really? Yep. Pretty oh, positive. Sweet. Okay. I'm going to take one. 11 and four is what? 15. I'm going to take 15, 15 back. Okay. And then I still have one left. All right. So King Kate's got two healing potions. Woods just took one of her two, so she's got one left. That brings us up to... I'm sorry. I have one more question. Yeah. Can I ready an action? I'm going to say no because you've already used an action bonus actions. Okay. I have another question. Mm -hmm. Can I gust their bolt? You would have to... That would have to be a ready to action. But if I I can ready that action? Yes. You can ready that action to use your reaction to cast gust. Okay. But I'm going to say at this point you can't because you've already done I've done all the things. That's fine. All right, Vasa, you're at the door. You're hearing some scuffing going along inside. It sounds like somebody's closing towards the door, but they haven't opened it yet. They're still inside. You don't know if they're going to open or just defending. You're not sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so he's actually going to ready in action. Okay. Right at the door. You're on the old door trap. <laughs> yeah, door trap. Yeah. All right. So if somebody opens the door, you're just going to swing away at him. Yep. You guys go ahead and roll, not Vasa, because you're focusing on the door. So Kincaid and Woods, go ahead and roll perception checks. 10. Yeah, my dice got cold. Uh, seven. You guys don't notice really anything, but it does sound like there's more commotion around you. Like the noise level has picked up and the citizens around you are starting to run around, but you're not sure why at this point. Okay. And now let's see. Enemy two, we're going to say that... You start hearing some shouting and you look over and you see that there are Order of Light members among the crowd and you put together that the two that blinked into Dorma and formed everybody on that side that something was going on, but they're all on the towers that aren't near you. So they're working their way towards the crowd, but it's kind of chaotic, so it's going to take them a while to get there. Kincaid. Are the two guys still on the tower shooting bolts at me? They will be when it's their turn. Uh, I'm going to cast Gust of Wind at them. A line of strong wind, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide, blasts from you in a direction you choose for the spell's duration. Each creature that starts its turn in that line must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away from you in a direction following the line. Any creature in the line must spend two feet of movement for every one foot. The gust disperses, gas or vapor, blah, blah, blah. So one guy rolled a 15 and the other one rolled a crit fail. So the 15 is good. It doesn't say anything about a failed saving throw. He gets pushed 15 feet, right? The failed one does. I'm just saying that on a success, it doesn't say okay. half or anything. So but. I imagine they stay on there. But we'll say that he is, you pushed them both back, but one of them is able to grab like the railing and like holding on, getting blown by this wind. And then the other guy just got launched off the top of this tower and he's going to fall 30 feet pretty awkwardly. So I'm going to double that damage. So I'm just going to roll 66. Yep. He lands with a pretty heavy thud and gets knocked unconscious. All right. Um, so I'm keeping that gust of wind on that guy okay. and then running towards the door. Sounds good. I'll say you can make it to the door so you can get behind uh, Basso. So that guy's hanging on for dear life. Yep. Is there anyone else near me? Uh, citizens are running around. But if I take a quick look, is anyone else pointing crossbow crossbows at me? You can see that the Order of Light members are trying to get distance to you they have crossbows but there's so many citizens running around that they can't get a good line of sight on you okay they might try to shoot you but they're gonna have disadvantage because they're gonna be shooting through a crowd and i'm kind of hiding behind <laughs> Hiding behind <laughs> <also>. <laughs> love it i mean yeah I don't, two bolts almost took me out so no no that makes sense and this is up for a minute so so that guy is just going to be out of it for the time being from the door, the door opens. So, so you can take your uh, attack of opportunity as a big gladiator looking guy kind of steps into the doorway. Uh, 13. 13 is going to just scratch at his plate armor that he's wearing. And he kind of chuckles as he then attacks you. Can I, on my attack of opportunity, can I initi- initiate rage? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Because, you know, he, he was just so amped up. And when he swung, you know, and then he just over swung and just... Yeah. All right, so he is holding a big morning star, which is kind of like a mace, but with uh, spikes spikes on the end of it. And he's just going to slam it into you pretty hard for, well, he's going to try to hit you. A 10. That misses. And the next one is a 9, which also misses. So he tries to swing at you, but you're surprisingly nimble. (laughs) And you just (laughs) duck and move out of the way. And he is kind of frustrated. Looking behind him, you see that Captain Brandon is chained up. And he is limp, 
bleeding a little bit and he's kind of lost some of his strength and he's hanging from his hands. Okay. You don't see, at least from the doorway went looking and you don't see Chad, which I think was also in custody. Oh, okay. And that is it for the enemies. So it brings us up to Woods. Um, You went inside. I'm at the door. You're at the door so we can see through the door. Uh, I can't, yeah. I'll let out a little like, I mean, Captain Brandon, I think I would. I, I'm right I would see him. I yeah. was like, Captain Brandon, I'm doing everything I can to get to him. All right, I'm going to, and there's still people up in the... Um, there's one guy up in the tower that is hanging on for dear life as some wind is blowing him around. He's like a sail. And there's a big guy near the door that just came out, right? Yeah, big guy just kicked the door down. Faso scratched him with his sword, and then he tried to hit him with his morning star. So they're in a melee combat. How far am I from them? Yeah, probably 10 feet, 15 feet. Since you had just healed Kincaid, it was just there. All right, can I shoot him with an arrow? Am I too close? No, you can try to shoot him with an arrow. I'm going to pump two into the big guy. Yep. Good advantage. Oh, good. Uh, That was uh, 30. Okay, that hits. 10, Callus Slayer makes another 5, so 15. Um, Do I get advantage on both rolls? Yeah. I mean, you're getting advantage because Vasa's Vasa's one giving advantage with his uh, totem of the wolf. 26 to hit and... Uh, eight more damage, so that's 23 total. So the guy in plate, you kind of find some um, on the side of him. He's not quite as armored up, so you get into some of those grooves, and he deals quite a bit of damage to him. But I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 19. You were able to stay on your feet as you kind of get slammed into by some of the citizens that are running around. Okay. And kind of creating a stampede, but it's kind of like that panic, panic movement, and you're now firing arrows. and Yeah. All sorts of chaos is happening. Yeah. Let's get him and go. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. I just got to wait my turn. Masa, <laughs> 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 what's up? Okay. Um, yeah, he can uh, swing at the big guy. Oh, Natty 20. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Love it. Um, so he gets, uh, okay, on, on Natty 20, double your max damage roll. Our table is you deal maximum damage, and then you get to roll your normal attack. So okay. what would you normally roll? Uh, 1d8, and then plus 5. All right, so you're going to do immediately 8 plus 5. Looks I'm like sorry, you get actually, pl- it's plus 7, 10 time in rage now. Yeah, I was looking okay. at his plus 2 there. So, yeah. <laughs> so. so 8 plus 7, so you immediately do 15. Okay. And now you get to just roll like you hit. Roll it. <sighs> 1. Dang. Uh, so Another that's eight. 8 total. So 15 and 8 would be... 23. 23. 23. That's <laughs> just like this 23 number. Yeah. So you do and another then, 23 damage to him. And then I'll roll I'll attack again. Crit pale. <laughs> Fail. Well, right. roll the D100. <laughs> mm. D100. Yep. See the severity of the crit fail. Oh it's yeah. A new thing I'm adding. I like that better than the crit fail cards. Yeah. They were underwhelming. I know. I know. They're just underwhelming. Guys, uh, 19. All right. So with a crit fail, you don't don't make that face. <laughs> you well, hit him uh, really well. And then you like scream and you're really excited. So you go to swing again and he puts his arm up to like block yours and you lose the grip of your sword. No. And it goes through and obviously hits Captain Brandon. No. Uh. But it doesn't hit with the blade side. It hits with the hilt Pummel. of the sword. Oh, but he does get knocked unconscious. Oh, well, you have to carry him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm fighting a big guy. All right. You guys got to go get him. It's fine. We'll get him. And your turn is over, so you can't summon it yet. Okay. Vasa can't do it because he's in the middle of combat. Kincaid Woods, go ahead and roll your perception checks. 14. 23. You're going to notice two things, both of you guys. You now notice that the citizens have started casting spells. Yeah. But what is weird is they're not casting spells at the Order of Light members. Instead, they're casting spells at these large spider creatures that have seemed to come through. And you notice that there are now some rifts that have opened inside of this very chaotic internment camp that you've created. That's the first thing you notice. So they're Denoa? There are some of Denoa mixed in the mix now. Okay. Second thing you notice is that all of those air elemental ships that were inside the city have now started turning and are coming towards the internment camp, kind of being signaled by the two big fires that are going on in the towers. That makes sense. Yeah. And enemy twos are going to keep closing the distance, and they are going to try to take a shot at Woods with their crossbows, but they're going to have disadvantage. 13. Misses. And 18. Bad hits. All right, roll a constitution saving throw. Uh, Three. 
All right, you take seven piercing damage and 10 poison damage. One of the other citizens, the one that missed Woods, just went down and you see a golden shard floating from somebody that just took an arrow from a guard and they did not seem to really care. Okay. Uh, Kincaid. All right. So your is, turn now. is the big guy guarding the door? He's still in the way of the door. He is in melee combat with Vasa. I will say you would have the ability to maybe get by him, but he might attack you. You're not sure. Well, that's okay, because I'm going to cast Misty Self. Misty Step. Misty Self. <laughs> misty <laughs> misty <laughs> Self. <laughs> I Misty myself. <laughs> um, so this is actually a bonus action. So before I go, is the guy still sailing in the wind? Yep. You, haven't, okay. you haven't lost concentration on that spell yet, so he's still out of commission. Okay. I'm going to cast Misty Step and teleport 30 feet closer to Captain Brandon. Okay. So you get in there to Captain Brandon. You definitely see Captain Brandon is unconscious hanging there. And then you see that Chad is in like a stockade off on one of like the horse stalls. Okay. Because you guys are in a barn. That's a reminder. Is there like a lock on it? Yeah. There'd be a lock on both of them. Lock on the chains holding Captain Brandon up and then a lock on the stockade so you could swing it open to get him out. So there's two locks, two people. But no key. But no key. I have a question. I may have an answer. <laughs> so I have a cantrip called Mending. The spell repairs a single break or tear in an object you touch. Would I be able to like reverse mend? No. Oh, damn. <laughs> That's called breaking. <laughs> I like that idea though. Uh, It'd be like disintegration, aging. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look back. Does the big gladiator dude have a key on him? Go ahead and roll a perception check. Just going to do that. Uh, 18. You would see a leather necklace around him from the back. You wouldn't see a key, but you'd see a leather necklace around his neck. Mm. All right. We're next to him, aren't we? You're next to him. I know. I got an idea. Oh, He's oh, like oh. 20 feet away from him at this point because he did the missy step into the barn. Yeah. All right. That was a, you know, a bonus action. So you still have an action. Yeah. I got to take this guy out. Um, I'll, I'll cast Firebolt at him. Okay. From the I, back, you I have, have advantage. Yeah. All my cards here. All right. Just going through all his spells. I love it. I got to do something. I mean, I, I need the key. Uh, natural 20. Nice. I mean, Natty Kitty. Natty Caddy. <laughs> Natty Caddy. Natty Caddy. Um, I heard the episode where you first say it, and I'm like, oh, Natty Caddy would have sounded so great. Yeah. Thanks, Shannon. All right. Um, so max damage plus your normal roll. Uh, next damage is 20 plus another 2d10. 8 and 5 is 13, 33 damage. All right, he takes a really big hit from the back. I will mention there is a sword right next to Captain Brandon also. That looks familiar. Okay. Like a what? A sword. Oh. Your sword. Yeah. Yep. Uh, can I, like, is Chad awake? Chad, let's roll a, roll a d6. Even he's awake. Odd he's not awake. Six. So he's awake, but he's looking weakish, but he, no, he's also a really strong barbarian, so he can probably pull through. But he might not be good in a fight, but he could probably carry Captain Brandon. Okay. I'm probably all out of turns here. Okay. That brings us up to enemy one, which was my armored dude. He is not sure what to do right now because he's by himself outnumbered and getting shot, burned, and hacked at. He doesn't know what to do, so he's just going to go into a rage and attack Vaso. Everybody's going to have advantage on him because he's doing we already rec have. reckless <laughs> attack. <laughs> yeah, everyone already has it anyways. Um, a 15 and a 23 to hit. Uh, 15 meets and 23 hits. All right, you take 22 piercing damage. Which is 11 because I'm in rage. And then he's going to use his crushing blow on one of those to deal an addition, additional four. Doesn't sound uh, very additional crushing. Additional four, <laughs> is that half or? Uh, yeah, it'd still be half because it's just 13. added to his melee damage. Okay. And he is then going to just try to plow through you to get into the crowd. So, like, he's recognizing that he's getting shot from the back, shot from the side, swings at you twice, and he's just going to try to run through you to push both you and him into the crowd of people so he'd get that extra cover from just citizens running around. So we'll do competing strength checks as he tries to uh, run through you. He got a 10. You have advantage on strength text because you're raging. He did too. And he got a <laughs> uh, 17. So he tries to push you through, but you're able to just hold him there. Okay, good. And that brings us up to Woods. Get the key around his neck. He shouts ah. from inside the bar. Yeah. Yeah, can I? I don't think you hear him. <laughs> Not with the chaos going oh. on outside. No. And okay. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to go into the barn and help. Okay, there is a big. Needy barbarian fight going on right at the doorway. I thought he just got... Oh, they didn't get pushed into Did the crowd. Did not get pushed, no. Oh. 
Well, in that case, I'm just going to shoot some more arrows in this feller. In the, yeah. All right. Uh, 14. I was going to say you have advantage, but I was also going to give you disadvantage because of at this point, the citizens have kind of started blocking your view. Does that okay. make sense? So yeah. you're shooting through citizens as they're going. Do you still want to shoot? Um, no, I... You know, like the cast is going to move the citizens yeah, yeah, yeah. into a line of fire. You can still shoot like the guards do, but I wanted to. I know. Let I'm just trying know. to. I'm trying to figure out how to ignite the citizens to help. <laughs> ignite them? Well, just like. Well, they're fighting Spider to Noah too. Yeah, yeah, they're fighting Spider to Noah. They're creating their own distraction, helping. Um, yeah, it's pretty chaotic. You yeah, definitely I, cut I'm just off gonna, a lot of the help that the Order Light would have had. That's great. I'm gonna fight my way through the crowd and make it to the to get into melee with the Vaso and the guy. Okay. So I can get there and then I can attack? Yep, melee. you can do a melee attack, yep. Good, I am not gonna flick the wounds yet. I feel like this guy's gonna go down soon. I'm Maybe. just gonna get my sickle out. Ooh, nat 20. <laughs> nat 20. Let's just, and a 19. Nat natural 20, uh, max damage plus your roll. Man, three nat 20s on this guy. Let's see. Whew. And he's still standing. He's still standing. Four, nine, and six um, with my right hand. Right. What was the max that you could have done? That was my whole thing. The nine was the max I could have done. Oh, and then six more. And then I got six more. And then okay, Slayer so tail, and then add three for Slayer. Yep. And then I'm going to another <laughs> nat <Wow>. twenty. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> very, very low. To then go twenty guessed. nineteen twenty, um, but it was my left hand, so my max damage is just four, and then I roll for four. To add another three, so seven on top of that. Yep, he is buckling down to one knee, but he's still lazily like shh, moving around with his mace, trying to attack still. Okay, uh, so Vasto is going to grab the uh, the, the key around key. his neck, yep, and then he's gonna fly up over him, like just over him, and gonna yell Kincaid, and he's gonna throw the key at him. Go ahead and roll a dexterity throw. I don't know. I think a dexterity, a normal... throw? A dexterity throw. <laughs> a dexterity throw. A dexterity saving throw. Dex, okay. Dex. Anything, yeah, you can do anything dex base. So uh, you can tell me which one you want. That's a baseball throw. <laughs> oh, yeah, your catcher's mitt is this raging barbarian throwing something at you. <laughs> Key to the so, eye. Uh, sleight of hand, maybe. Sleight of hand, sure. Sure. What? What? what <laughs> it should all be about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah plus, pretty close. plus two, basically. <sighs> Five. You get the key off of him because you can fly. He's getting down pretty low. You go to throw it and it hits the door frame <laughs> and falls right behind the guy. It's about 20 feet away from Kincaid. Okay. I'm like, Kincaid, it's right there. Right there. <laughs> and then, uh, and then boss is going to summon its sword back. Okay. So that's your bonus and, action. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't hit anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Flies back to you like Thor's hammer. And that brings us up to my spiders. They are just running amok inside of the citizens they're fighting them you see some dark shards happening because they are magic casters and they're fighting back you also see some light shards starting to pile up so it's looking very very chaotic which is opening more rifts so now there's probably about three or four rifts inside this little internment camp and then enemy two is going to try to shoot at Vaso since he flew up. So I'm going to say when you flew up, you were getting shot at because now somebody had a line of sight on you. So short bow, 16 and 11. Uh, 16 hits, 11 misses. Seven piercing damage and roll a constitution saving throw. Uh, 11. And 10 poison damage. You get a half the piercing but not the poison. In case you're wondering. And that brings us up to Kincaid. Did I see the key? Yeah, you definitely see the key because he tried to throw it and you were ready to catch it and then it hit the door frame. I'm going to go get the key. Okay. I'm going to go unlock Chad first because we need him. Okay. I'll say you can unlock one of them because you have to move 20 feet and move 20 feet again, which is outside your movement range. So take a dash action. Yep. So you can unlock one of them and you're choosing Chad first. Yeah, because we're going to need his help, I think. Okay. Sounds good. And then I'm going to give Chad one of the healing potions. Like it. Nice. I need him. Up to speed here. Yep. And then I want to make my way over to Captain Brandon. With the key. Yep, With the key. No, you just roll, uh, no. You're just rolling D4s over here. <laughs> uh, no, it was nine plus four. Nine plus four, so 13. Go ahead and roll a D10 to see what he had to start with. Eight. Eight. So 21. One. So if you want to track Chad's, we'll make some stats as we go for what his health is and stuff like that. But he's got 21 hit points right now. That brings us up to enemy one. My armor plated guy is not looking too hot. 
He is going to reach into his pouch and take a health potion. NPCs getting health potions. What's this world coming to? What is this world coming to? I, I mean, it's a little late for him to be taking it at this point with your guys' natural 20s happening all the time. He heals up a little bit, not a lot after what you guys have done to him. And then as a bonus action, does he have any bonus actions? He does not have any bonus actions. So that is all he's going to do. That brings us up to Woods. Um, I'm going to step over him okay. because I feel like fossil has got it under control. Okay. And I'm going to go inside and help with Captain Brandon. Uh, I'm going to go up to Captain Brandon and does give- Does a 12 hit you? No. Okay. He tries to swing at you as you step over him and he misses. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to walk to Captain Brandon and say, throw me the key. Can I catch it? Yeah. I mean, he's right next to him, so. Oh, okay. I just do like a handoff. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I'm going to unlock- You toss it up after you like unlock- Chad, you just toss the key over. You catch it. And it twirls and light hits it. You're like, whoa. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm going to catch it, unlock it, um, and then I'm going to, can I, is he conscious enough that I can give him a health potion via so mouth or no? As you unlock it, he's going to collapse to the floor. Are you going to catch him or just let him fall? Uh, no, I'm going to catch him. How awake is he? Can I give him a potion? He, he was knocked unconscious by Faso's sword. Okay. My bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just going to before I unlock him, I'm going to cast Cure, or I'm going to give him the Gift of Life. Okay. Can you explain to the listeners what that is since that's a custom card? So the Gift of Life, the caster taps into their soul and uses life as the force to aid those in need. Take 1d4 soul damage. Half of this damage is then used to heal another player. So what I'm hmm. going to do... So you can heal someone for two for one? So what I'm going to do is I'm and I can roll it as many times as the level I have. So you can roll up to 64. Yep. So, what happens when I roll a one? It's going to be normal rounding, so it would be one for one. Okay. How many are you rolling? I was just going to roll until I felt like there was enough. All right, so you're going to have up to six. Yeah. So we're at well, two. he's got two hit points now, so he, he'd be awake. Yeah, right? so he has two hit points now? Yeah. Yeah, so he's awake, so he's conscious? Yep. Okay. Conscious enough. So yeah. you take two hit points, heal him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to unlock it. He's very, very wary on his feet. Okay, well, I'm going to hold. I'm going to support him. Okay. Well, we Sounds got good. Chad, too. We got Chad. Chad, over here. And then what are we doing? We, we got to get out of here. I understand that. What's the plan? We got to get back to the ship. Okay. Are we just going to run through all of this chaos? May use the chaos as a cover? Why don't we get Basso to fly Captain Brandon over? We I can create more distractions. And then you and Chad just start barreling your way through. Okay. And then I'll follow behind you. And as we're running out, I'm going to yell to the citizens with my gus like protect us um we'll come back for you all right well anything charisma based deception i think is the appropriate one um, yeah i don't think we're coming back <laughs> i think at some point we will come back for them season eight yeah. <laughs> just lie to them you know 13 they are trying to fight off spiders and they're getting shot through for the order of light yeah. so they're a little bit um wary of anything so all right well I try you don't see any you don't see any effect all right so we're just running yeah mission complete i'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> all right so you guys start making it back to the door we are at vaso's turn now okay well vaso is just kind of flirting on top of this guy yep so he's, he's just, just gonna, right above him he's gonna take the sword execution straight style. down yep. warrior execution style yeah all just right go straight well, down with it i think that's a cool way for him to go down so he turns into a light shard and the doorway is now clear okay all right what? Are, we still in, are we still in turn order we are still in turn order just so you can keep track of how the order of light people are going to track you does that make sense what if i open the rifts do you think what if i connected all the rifts and made one gigantic rift do you think that would be enough of a distraction well i think all the order members on the Danoa side came back on this side Right? Didn't we see a surplus of? Yep, on the other side, and then right. they blinked. So I'm wondering if you, I wonder if you open up a rift in here, yep. we can just run and through to Noah. That's what I do. I'm gonna open uh, up. Let's, let's get outside of the fence first. No, we don't it's want chaos. No, outside the fence of the internment camp. Because there, no, there's nobody on the other side. Yeah, but how are we gonna get outside the fence? We'll figure it out. There's no one over it, there. It'll be quicker. If, okay. I can, I can break it down. Yeah, nope. he can tidal wave it again. Okay. Okay. All right, I so, do that. so you guys pop up in a rift close by, since you can't really get to the ones that are more in the yeah. center. And you jump into the door. How many of us are there? There are five. Well, you Chad's three, holding. Chad, and so there's five. All right, you guys pass into the 
Dormicide, and you see that there's just a concatenate of spiders that have pulled down one of the watchtowers, and they're in the field, and you see some of the Order of Light members on that side fighting them. You see some of the citizens on that side fighting them that have fallen through the rifts. So that chaos kind of spilled into Dorma also, but it's definitely a lot lighter. So you can start running. But if you're trying to run away from the cast, as Vaso just was pointing out, the fence is still up. Uh, we're, so we're running. And yep, we're yeah, running. Uh, uh, you do something about this fence. Yeah, I'm casting another tidal wave at the fence. Okay. So Tear as, it you down. Get, as you get to 120 feet from the fence, you cast tidal wave. Same thing, just leading this wall of water in front of you. There's nobody around it, so it just cascades and tumbles, and you guys can continue to flee. But you are being chased by a handful of spiders after you. Can you cast it again behind us? Uh... Yeah. Do it again. That way. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out if that's the one I want to actually cast. I want to look at the map. Yeah, I'm just going to do Tidal Wave again behind us. Okay. Just to try to push them away from us while we dash. So I picture you in the front of the pack doing the Tidal Wave to knock it all down. And then I picture Kincaid just like stopping, turning so everybody runs past him. And then and Tidal Wave behind you to take any of the spiders or anybody that was chasing you and push them back towards the chaos. Yes. And then you guys are able to successfully flee... The scene. Guys, that, that was, was intense. so intense. Ah, looks like the bard has done it again. What a splendid crowd y'all have been. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Cottage Rest Inn. Hey guys, it's Mike, your host and Dungeon Master at Carriage Rest Tales. I just want to say thanks for taking the time to listen to our podcast. It really means a lot to us. If you are enjoying the content and you haven't already, please give us a five-star review. It's really going to help us grow our listenership and be able to reach more people. I also want to give a special thanks to Tabletop Audio for providing the background music for today's episode.